friends, welcome back. We're going to continue reading Crenshaw by Catherine Applegate. And last time we left off with Crenshaw and Jackson talking in the bathroom. They're going to try to sneak to his bedroom so they can talk. And Robin woke up and is trying to go to the bathroom. So let's see if she ever found out about Crenshaw. Chapter 15. Uh, Aretha? I said. I was talking to Aretha. I hated lying, but it wasn't like I had a choice. Robin yawned. <sighs> Were you giving her a bath? Yeah. I looked back and forth, forth and back. Sister, imaginary friend. Sister, imaginary friend. Aretha ran over to nuzzle Robin's hand. Aretha's not wet, Robin said. I, I used the hairdryer on her. She hates the hairdryer. Robin kissed the top of Aretha's head. Don't you, baby? Robin didn't seem to see Crenshaw. Maybe because it was pretty dark in the hallway. Or maybe because he was invisible. Or maybe because none of this was really happening. She smells the same, Robin observed. Nice and doggy. I glanced at Crenshaw. He rolled his eyes. Oh well, Robin said, yawning. I'm going back to bed. <sighs> Night, Dax. I love you. Night, Robin. I said, love you too. As soon as her bedroom door closed, we retreated to my room. Crenshaw leaped onto my mattress as if he owned it. When Aretha tried to join him, he growled. It wasn't very convincing. I need to understand what's happening. I slumped against the wall. Am I going crazy? Crenshaw's tail rose and fell, making lazy S's in the air. No, you most certainly are not, he licked the paw. By the way, at the risk of repeating myself, how about those purple jelly beans? When I didn't answer, he settled into a donut shape, tail wrapped around himself, and closed his eyes. He purred the way my dad snores, like a motorboat with engine problems. I stared at him, a huge, damp bubble bath, taking cat. There's always a logical explanation, I told myself, and a part of me, the scientist part of me, really wanted to figure out what was going on. Still, a much bigger part of me felt certain that I needed this hallucination, this dream, this thing, to disappear. Later, when Crenshaw was safely out of my house, not to mention my brain, I could think about what all this meant. A soft knock on my door told me Robin was back. She always knocks the beginning of wheels on the bus. Ta tap tap ta tap 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 Jackson? Please go to sleep, Robin. I can't sleep. I miss my trash can. Your trash can? Dad took my trash can to sell at the yard sale. I'm pretty sure that was a mistake, Robin. I said, nobody wants to buy your trash can. It had blue bunnies on it. We'll get out of the garage in the morning. Aretha made a move to sniff Crenshaw's tail. He hissed. I put my finger to my lips to shush him, but Robin didn't seem to hear anything. Night, Robin, I said. See you in the morning. Jackson? I rubbed my eyes and groaned, ugh, the way I'd seen my parents do more than once. Now what? Do you think I can get another bed someday? Sure, of course. Maybe even one with blue bunnies. Jackson? Yes. My room is scary without my stuff in it. Could you come read me, Lyle? I took a long, slow breath. <sighs> sure, I'll be right there. Robin sniffled. I'll, I'll just wait right here by your door, okay? Okay. I shot a glance at Crenshaw. Just give me a second, Robin. There's something I really need to do. Chapter 16 I went to my window and opened it. Carefully, I pulled out the screen. Our apartment was on the ground floor. A few feet below the window, a cushion of grass waited. Goodbye, Crenshaw, I said. He opened one eye a bit, like someone peeking from behind the shade. But we were having such a lovely time. Now, I said, I put my hands on my hips to show I meant business. Jackson, be reasonable. I came all this way. You have to go back to wherever you came from. Crenshaw opened his other eye. But you need me here. 
I don't need you. I have enough to deal with already. With a great show of effort, Crenshaw sat up. He stretched, <sighs> easing his back into an upside-down U. I don't think you understand what's going on here, Jackson, he said. Imaginary friends don't come of their own volition. We are invited. We stay as long as we're needed, and then, and only then, we leave. Well, I sure didn't invite you. Crenshaw sent me a doubtful look. His long, whiskery brows moved like strings on a marionette. I took a step closer. If you won't go, I'll make you go. I put my arms around his waist and yanked. It was like hugging a lion. The cat weighed a ton. Crenshaw dug his claws deep into the quilt my great aunt Trudy made me when I was a baby. I gave up and let go. Look, Crenshaw said as he extracted his claws from my quilt. I can't go until I help you. I don't make the rules. Then who does? Crenshaw stared at me with eyes like green marbles. He put his two front paws on my shoulders. He smelled like soap suds and catnip and the ocean at night. You do, Jackson, he said. You make the rules. A foghorn bleated in the distance. I pointed to the windowsill. I don't need anyone's help. And I sure don't need an imaginary friend. I'm not a little kid anymore. Balderdash. Is this because I hissed at that odorous dog? No. Could we at least wait till morning? There's a chill in the air, and I just took a bubble bath. No. Tap, 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 tap. Jax, it's lonely in the hallway. Coming, Robin, I called. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a frog hop onto the windowsill. He gave a tiny, nervous croak. We have a visitor, I said, pointing. Maybe if I distracted Crenshaw, he'd move on. Did you know some frogs can leap so far it'd be like a human jumping the length of a football field? They're amazing jumpers. Mmm, they're amazing bedtime snacks, too, murmured Crenshaw. Come to think of it, I wouldn't mind a little amphibious morsel. I could see he was in full predator mode. His eyes turned to dark pools, his rear wiggled, his tail twitched. See you, Crenshaw, I said. Fine, Jackson, he whispered, eyes lasering on the frog. You win. I'll leave. Do a bit of hunting. I am, after all, a creature of the night. Meantime, you get to work. I crossed my arms over my chest. On what, exactly? The facts. You need to tell the truth, my friend. The dog, the frog twitched, and Crenshaw froze. Pure muscle and instinct. Which facts? Tell the truth to who? Crenshaw pulled his gaze off the frog. He looked at me, and to my surprise, I saw tenderness in his eyes. To the person who matters most of all. The frog jumped off the sill, back into the night. In one magnificent leap, Crenshaw followed. When I ran to the window, all I saw was a blur of black and white streaking through the moon-tipped grass. I felt like I'd taken off an itchy sweater on a cold day, relieved to be rid of it. But surprised by how chilly the air turned out to be. And that's the end of chapter 16. So, Crenshaw says that Jackson must need him for some reason, and that Jackson is the one who decides if Crenshaw's there or not. Why do you think Jackson might need Crenshaw right now? Think about what we've read so far. Why do you think Jackson might need his help? Well, maybe we'll find out next time we read. I'll see you guys for our next few chapters, and don't forget to do your book response. I'll see you later. Bye.